Hi, and welcome to SCM This Week. My name is Beth Rennie. I'm Editor-in-Chief at ASCM, and I'm joined by our CEO, Abe Ashkenazi. How are you doing, Abe? I'm wonderful. Beth, and yourself? Just fine. Thank you. Um, so if anyone is new, welcome. And uh, this is when we talk about Abe's Friday column. This past Friday, he talked about uh, working women and how COVID is really causing some real life changing challenges for them. Um, you know, tasks that are often unpaid and unnoticed, but essential, you know, invisible labor and how a lot of working moms are taking on the childcare now that schools are virtual or childcare now that the child uh, care agencies are closed. And, you know, it's really going to be setting them back when they try to get back in the workforce and hopefully at a competitive salary. Mm -hmm. um, and interestingly, also sadly aligning with this was the passing of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who was really a feminist icon and a warrior for gender equality. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, Mary Barra, CEO of GM, called Ginsburg a trailblazer who showed that all women belong in industry. So Abe, I'd like to start there. What do you think COVID does mean for working mothers in the near term and in the future? Uh, I think we've seen a lot of challenges relative to women, specifically either in employment or in the home. Um, this uh, pandemic has exasperated a situation that existed before. It just highlighted the problems that we're having relative to not only gender equality, but uh, division of labor and role responsibility. Um, as you um, clearly indicated, you know, Ruth Bader Ginsburg was a trailblazer. She focused quite a bit on education and employment equality for women. And uh, truly unfortunate that we're sitting here today some 50 years later and still having a discussion about gender equality, that we haven't achieved the kind of, uh, I think, um, progress that I think she would have been, um, you know, embraced. Moreover, though, we've made some progress, but it seems like we've got a long way to go relative to job and role responsibilities. Mm -hmm. The shift to the home-based environment um, has added work. It has not taken away work from working mothers. And too often when we talk about a home-based, you know, work effort, whether it be child care or whether it be home maintenance or, you know, caring for elderly, you know, uh, families, it often falls to women within the household. It uh, generally um, it, or disproportionately uh, focuses on their efforts. And yet, as we've seen more individuals coming into a home-based setting and the demands on their time has only increased, it has not decreased, and now they have less support. So oftentimes you had family members or neighbors watching your kids. Uh, in today's environment, it's very difficult to get that kind of child care, as you, you know, clearly articulated that we're having problems with child care across the board, now, whether in person or at home. This has presented a significant problem for working parents across the you know the board the awareness and recognition of women and the role in society i think needs a, a greater lens for us and a greater focus and i think too often we um just accept it that women take on these roles responsibilities because that's what it's been like in the past without questioning wait a second here if we're going to be moving towards this home-based environment how does you know support and what does it look like from an employer? What does it look like from your network? What does it look like from your own expectations for um, your organization and for yourself? There's no escaping work anymore. Uh, the, today, um, with Zoom and with um, on the online and virtual calls, this has, you know, really um, put a spotlight on the efforts within the home. And unfortunately, uh, the majority of it has fallen on women. Uh, a disproportionate share of role responsibility and accountability has fallen on the women. And without flexible work schedules, without the ability to have daycare or respite, this is a situation that we collectively need to uh, embrace and identify what the, you know, what kind of support systems are necessary to enable individuals to be in a home-based environment and to be productive and more importantly, to have a work-life balance. And I think that's part of the challenge here is that with the additional effort being placed on mothers, there is no work-life balance anymore. You can either have work or you can have a, you know, childcare or, you know, family care. It is becoming increasingly difficult to get both right now. Right. And as your article stated, 
according to research, women take on, or moms, I should say, take on 70% of the household work. And that's that invisible labor we were just talking about. And this is cooking meals, scheduling yep. dentist appointments, noticing that the floor needs to be swept, mm -hmm. maybe volunteering at your kid's school, taking the dogs to the vet. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really interesting because these are all things that often, as a mom myself, sometimes you just kind of do it automatically. Right. But if you really sat down and thought about it, these are the things that keep the trains running and they're yeah. really, really essential. Um, so kind of a two-part question for you. First, what can we as everyday people, parents, mm -hmm. friends, do to create more equitable, equitable balance of this mm -hmm. invisible labor? And then second, you touched a bit in your article about what some businesses and cities and other organizations are doing. So as a supply chain organization, what can you do to support the women in your business? Um, obviously, the, you know, the, the answer to the first question is at least starting the conversation about role responsibilities within the household. And the shared, um, you know, sort of, you know, responsibility and accountability for maintaining a household. This is not women's work. Uh, this is, you know, oftentimes the the brunt of it does fall to women. And as you know, we all know, this is an unpaid job. But probably the most critical job that we can have is the future of our, you know, not only the kids, but um, our, you know, our ability to have a meaningful and rewarding career, whether it be in the home or whether it be in a work environment. There is not a, you know, from my perspective, and I think a lot of people, you know, the, the work that you're doing at home is either more, you know, in greater impact than you're ever doing in the office. And, the, you know, the influence that you're having on people. So I don't think we can minimize the benefit of having women at home and more importantly, having parents at home. I think it's been a great opportunity for a lot of you know individuals, but we haven't really changed the rubric in terms of what it means to work. And so, you know, the number of hours have only increased, they haven't decreased. And yet we're seeing, you know, a lot of burnout from parents, uh, even in our own staff. Um, no two individuals are having the same experience. While we're all going through the pandemic, um, we have our staff, you know, some individuals have four children underneath the age of nine. Right. I know this individual wants to get back into the office as soon as possible. <laughs> but more importantly, it's, you know, really, you know, reflected the challenge that we have right now with home-based as well as work-life balance. Mm -hmm. And I think it's starting to affect a lot of employers in terms of what does it look like on the backside of this? What can we do? And to your second question, I think there's got to be significant attention paid to flexible work schedules. I think that's, you know, if you want to retain and, um, you know, attract qualified individuals, you've got to be flexible in terms of what your work, you know, situation is. Yeah. Additionally, on-site daycare, uh, providing opportunities for individuals to bring their children to the office or to a factory. And I think in the article, we identified a number of organizations that have, you know, developed these, you know, support systems for working mothers or working parents. Yeah. Additionally, job sharing. I think there's opportunities for individuals not to be committed to full time, especially in today's environment. There's a lot of ways that we can affect the work, you know, for an organization without having to have, you know, cheeks and seats that we've always been, um, you know, a key part of work is that mm -hmm. if I don't see you, I'm not sure you're doing the job. Well, I think in today's environment, I think everybody is recognizing that work can be done in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Um, yeah. Additionally, and this goes really to the heart of it, equal pay. We've got to reward individuals for the jobs that they do, irrespective of their gender or you know the race or any other demographic. We need to recognize and reward individuals for the contributions they make to their organizations. And then lastly, um, universal health care providing individuals the opportunity to have a meaningful wage as well as health care benefits because oftentimes this is the you know the gap that a lot of individuals face is that they can get part-time jobs but without the benefits especially on part-time roles organizations generally don't extend health care benefits to part-time individuals so there are a number of things that individuals and organizations can do but the challenge that collectively that we have is on the back side of this what does it look like at home what does it look like in the office and are we, you know, are we recognizing that this work-life balance between, you know, working from home and providing a, you know, a career opportunity for individuals, is it reasonable? Is it possible? And I think there's, uh, I think there's still some open questions about that. Yeah, for sure. 
Um, I see a lot of comments in the chat. Some of them are from moms. So uh, as a mom myself, shout out to all the moms out there. And Abe, I know you and I both have college age kids. So, yeah. you know, definitely a shout out to everyone who is actually doing tech support and tutoring. Yes. <laughs> and you know, I, I mean, I can't even imagine what that must be like for you. So, uh, yeah. So thank you to everyone in the chat. And thanks to everyone for joining. Thank you, Abe. And uh, tune in on our LinkedIn and YouTube channels for another uh, SEM this week coming up shortly. My pleasure, Beth. Have a great day. Thanks. You too. Bye, everyone.